He's been at it again, our Teflon friend Gary Lineker. Only the Teflon appears to be rubbing off. Not content with preaching to us on a soapbox in a stadium built by slaves at the Qatar World Cup whilst pocketing the cash, or being bothered to take heed of the warnings that his interventions into politics are, are breaching the BBC guidelines. Remember the dig about Russian oligarchs? On Tuesday, in his latest gaffe, Gary tweeted that the government's plan to effectively ban anyone who arrives in the UK illegally from claiming asylum had been expressed in language that is not dissimilar to that used by Germany in the 30s. You know when someone's losing the argument when they start making reference to Nazi Germany. I hear his supporters say he didn't actually use the word Nazi. Yeah, that's a bit like Meghan and Harry claiming that they did not actually say the word racism. But we knew what they meant. And worse still... After making his comments and having a chat with his BBC bosses, Gary was defiant. He showed no remorse whatsoever. Do you fear getting suspended? No, I'm only making you do. Yes. Anything about the tweet, Gary? No, what do you regret sending the tweet at all? No. Do you stand by what you said? Sorry? Do you stand by what you said in your tweet? Of course. Pretty arrogant, right? And Gary's overpaid a long-in-the-tooth, spoiled brat match-of-the-day pundits, the likes of Ian Wright and Alan Shearer, who clearly haven't a clue of how highly sought after their jobs are or that people don't watch for them, are coming out in support of Gary by refusing to present the show. Pathetic. Talk about ego. Ian tweeted... Everybody knows what match of the day means to me, but I've told the BBC I won't be doing it tomorrow. Solidarity. Uh, cast your mind back in. Does Matt Letizia ring a bell? Solidarity? Right. Seriously. And if there was no football and just their boring rhetoric, people would simply switch off. They're not that good. And now a load of others are pitching their support. The BBC has had to cancel football focus because Alex Scott and Jason Mohammed who have joined in solidarity with Gary. For goodness sake, people, read the room. Some of my very good BBC mates are currently desperately trying to keep hold of their jobs because of the local radio cull and these spoilt brat presenters. I'm joining in with Gary. It's ridiculous. To be clear, these people are supporting Gary Lineker's deeply offensive complaints uh, and comparison, sorry, with Nazi Germany. Good on the BBC for finally showing some backbone, albeit a bit late. Now, this is not about freedom of speech. I'm all for that freedom. But this is not about that. This is about working for a state-owned broadcaster, paid for by you and I. If you don't pay the licence fee, you could end up in jail. A broadcaster whose existence relies on being apolitical and impartial. That is the only way that it can survive. BBC employees and freelancers, especially in prominent positions, have signed up to their charter and must follow the rules, especially those in news and their highest paid on-screen stars. If Gary doesn't like this, Gary could exercise his freedom to leave his £1.35 million job and he can continue to be vocal and take his talents elsewhere. That's what I did. Only I wasn't paid that much. Come to think of it, nobody there is. Perhaps all the spoiled brat presenters joining him might want to consider whether they would do this in a private company, like, say, ITV. Yeah, I thought not. They know that they'd be fired in a heartbeat. A load of woke celebrities have jumped onto the bandwagon to castigate the government. Pointless Richard Osman tweeted, pathetic, in response to the BBC's tweet that Gary would be stepping down. Gary Neville tweeted, when you take on the Tories and the system, awful people who we need gone, offer a, and then there's an emoji of wine. Sounds like he's already been on it. Carol Vordman chucked in her two pennies worth, saying how wonderful it was to see all the love and support for Gary. Well, that's what, not, not what I'm hearing. I personally have experienced the backlash of Gary's comments after he decided to take aim at me when I showed my support for Priti Patel's turn back policy. It was not the fact that he commented that was unacceptable. It was the fact that he worked to the BBC and commented. Nobody's bigger than the channel, Gary, and all the presenters joining you might want to consider that. It's time to clear the BBC sport pitch. It's time to show Lineker the red card.